As you grow your TFSA, sometimes it is not a bad idea to take advantage of a strategic swing trade along the way. Hold on to your seatbelt, folks. This is going to be a good one. A strategic swing trade. It's, it's not really a swing trade in the purest sense. It is taking advantage of a movement on a longer time frame to, of course, bank some profits, thus grow your TFSA in the process. We are going to talk about a strategic swing trade. We began with Air Canada in this month's update. However, before we do that, let's take a quick overview of where we are in the challenge. We have just completed month 14, and thus far we have added a total of $7,453 to the challenge TFSA. For those of you brand new to the challenge, we add a minimum of $500 each month and we top it up with any super chats, thanks, or stickers that are made on the channel. So far, viewers have added a total of $453, a huge thank you for your support. When it comes to making some of those uh, strategic swing trades, Air Canada has often presented me with some golden opportunities. Since the pandemic, Air Canada has ranged in price from a high around $25 to a low of usually around $16. In this month, they had a rough time and uh, dropped well below that $16 down to $14.75. I have no doubt that they will make their way back up. So I did jump in and added some to the challenge at $14.88. I, uh, I just missed that bottom. Is this a long-term investment? Yes and no. My goal is to simply ride these stocks up to $20 sell them for a half decent profit. I don't expect to hit $20 this year, but have no doubt we will in the first half of 2025. Are you going to add more? Yes, any month they drop below $16, I will add a few more shares for sure. Essentially, when we get to that $20 price, I will make at least a $4 per share on that swing. Holy banana bread! Hey, 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 that's my lie. I also made another move where I sold out of BTCY this month and moved those funds into BTCC.B. The idea is that Bitcoin could be making a move sooner than later, as that delayed pump that follows a halving is a uh, hopefully going to arrive. Keeping that in mind, if that pump were to occur while I was holding the covered call Bitcoin ETF, I would potentially lose out on some of the upside and that could be significant. So I am getting ready for that potential pump. Whether or not Bitcoin goes to the moon, you can still make, well, this channel go up with a click on that uh, sub button. So let's get into the challenge portfolio. We will start with the stocks that we have not added to in this cycle and take a look at their total returns. Brookfield Asset Management is sitting at 7.97%. We got Bell coming in at 2.06%. CNQ is pulling up at 1.66%. Decisive dividend. Oh boy, <laughs> negative 19.36%. This one continues to make me grimace. EIT.UN, 21.38%. Holy banana bread. Look at you, Canoe. Moving along, we got Fortis at 11.09. Pizza Pizza, they're coming up a little bit, negative 5.37%. Rio Can sitting at a nice looking 8.30%. And we have made 0.76% on our cash position. We have also not added any more to our US stocks. So the Global X FDS AI ETF sitting at 0.70%. Friedman Industries, oh boy, you're letting me down, negative 15.81%. Same with Liberty Energy negative 11.30%. Let's switch gears and look at the stocks we have added to this time around. First up, we have Bird Construction and we added another share to bring our total up to four. And that's a 1.17% stake in our portfolio. Their adjusted cost base, 19.71. And their current price is sitting at $22.93. We did receive 14 cents in dividends this month, taking those dividend total up to 0 0.56. That return on investment, 16.32%. Total return, 17.03%. We have already seen higher numbers than that 17.03%. So they're not the GOAT anymore. Could it be Canoe? Well, we're going to find out towards the end. You want to definitely stick around for that. Next, we have Scotiabank. We added another share to bring our total up to 8 for a 6.87% stake in my portfolio. That adjusted cost base, 61.62. Their price, 67.27. So far, we have received $25.44 in dividends. 
That gives us a return on investment of 9.18% and a total return of 14.34%. We have more dividends coming in September, so that is exciting for Scotiabank. Our next stock is Diversified Dividend Corporation, and I added 11 shares, taking this up to 80 in total and a 2.91% stake in my portfolio. That adjusted cost base, $2.76. Their price sitting at $2.85. We did receive another $1.67 in dividends, bringing that total up to $5.63. Their return on investment, 3.26%. Total return, 5.63%. It is good to see this little stock back once again in the green. Next, we have ADP or Drax Group, and I added four more shares taking us up to 17 in total for a 2.88% stake. The adjusted cost base, $15.03. Current price, a little bit lower, $13.26. No dividends yet on these guys. They are semi-annual, so we'll be getting some later in the year. That return on investment, negative 11.78%, and it's the exact same total return. Even though they are continuing to struggle, I still hold out hope for this one. Next, we have Hammond Manufacturing, and I added two more for 30 in total and a 3.62% uh, stake in my portfolio. Their adjusted cost base coming in at $8.95, current price $9.46. So far, we have received $1.65 in dividends. Their return on investment, 5.70%. Total return, 6.31%. People do ask me quite a bit if I still have faith in Hammond, and I absolutely do. In fact, I can't wait to see this one back in contention for the GOAT. I do think they're going to get back there. I did add another three shares to the Horizon's NASDAQ 100 covered call and leverage ETF, taking us up to 30 in total. That is an 8.48% stake in my portfolio. Their adjusted cost base, $23.21. Their current price, $22.13. I did receive my first dividends from this one, $6.75. Their return on investment, negative 4.67%. Total return after we factor in those dividends, negative 3.70%. Once tech starts climbing again, this is going to be a nice one for sure. We added five more shares to RMAX, the Hamilton REIT ETF, for a total of 10 shares and a 2.29% uh, stake. Their adjusted cost base comes in at $16.74. Their price, $17.94. We have received $0.68 cents thus far in dividends. That return on investment, 7.15%. Total return, 7.56%. I am still very hyped on this one. Up next is Sir Royalty. And we added one more share for a total of 31. That is a 4.97% stake. Their adjusted cost base, $15.05. Their current price way down at $12.56. We did receive another $2.95 in dividends, taking them up to $21.29. Return on investment, one of the worst, negative 16.54%. Total return after we factor in those dividends, a lot better, negative 11.98%. This is another hard one to watch. Next, we have Timber Creek Financial, and I added one more share for a total of 25, and uh, that makes a 2.52% stake. Their adjusted cost base, $7.37, current price, $7.90. I did receive another $1.38 in dividends, taking that total up to $6.10. Return on investment, 7.19. Throw in those dividends, we get a total return of 10.50%. Next, we have iShares S&P TSX Cap Energy Index. I added one more share for a total of 20. That is a 4.65% stake in my portfolio. Their adjusted cost base, $18.51. Current price, $18.20. So far, we've received $2.70 in dividends. So their return on investment, it is in the negative, negative 1.70%. Add the dividends in, still in the negative, negative 0.97% total return. Finally, we added three more shares to the Purpose NVIDIA Yield ETF for a total of eight shares and a 3.83% stake. 
Their adjusted cost base coming in at $41.20, their current price $37.48. We did receive some dividends, $3.50. Their return on investment, negative 9.03%. That total return after we add in the dividends, negative 7.97%. That misfire with those NVIDIA earnings hurt this selection quite a bit. But I do have long-term bullishness for NVIDIA. We did add another two new stocks to the channel. Challenge. First, there is Air Canada, as we mentioned earlier, for that strategic swing. We opened up with five shares at $14.88 each. Since then, we already have seen a total return of 3.75%. We also added 30 shares of the Purpose Bitcoin ETF pegged to the US dollar. We opened to that position at $11.45. Let us take a quick look at the overall portfolio. August was a crazy month on the market with lots of swings for sure. Despite the volatility, the challenge TFSA came in with a total return of 5.05%. The portfolio did receive $29.67 in dividends for a grand total of $217.09 over the life of the challenge. Let's take a quick look at the portfolio's diversification with data pulled from the Blossom app. Speaking of course of Blossom, if you want to check in on that challenge, I do have it uploaded there, and there is a link below to sign up to the app. According to uh, Blossom, our top five represented sectors are financials at 28.9%, industrials at 26.5%, energy at 15%, consumer cyclical at 10.4%, and communications at 7.6%. It is time to look at the toad and the goat of the portfolio for the last month. The infamous toad award for our worst performer of the month is once again going going to Decisive Dividend Corporation with a negative 19.36% total return. In second place is the U.S. stock Friedman Industries with a negative 15.81% total return. I would certainly like to see these numbers come down and have uh, losers perhaps less than negative 10%. And now for the GOAT. And we have a brand new winner, which was a surprise for sure. Canoe EIT took the title with a nice looking 21.38%. That deserves another holy banana bread. That's fantastic. Our runner up was Bird Construction with a total return of 17.03%. Can Canoe hold this title next month? Or uh, will Bird Construction soar back into that top spot? We will know the answer to that in our next 0 to 100K TFSA challenge update. If you are interested in any of the stocks we looked at today, don't forget to put in a whole heaping helping of due diligence before you place any of your hard earned money on the table. Let's continue that learning journey. Check out this video on REITs making bank from rate cuts. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.